Adam Rundle here. And today I want to talk to you about optimizing your finances, which is really centered around managing the two key areas of leverage in your business, being advertising and labor. So before I dive into all the detail here, I'm going to assume that you have watched the perfect PNL video that I've created. If you haven't watched it, please follow the link below and go and watch it first, as it is kind of a preface to what I'm going to discuss here. And in that video, I discussed how we build out our perfect PNL, lumping together advertising and labor, and attaching 55% of revenue to those two areas within our business. And today I'm going to talk to you about how we break that 55% up in greater detail. Secondly, I just want to emphasize who this is for. We're talking about a financial model here. And this financial model is built for service-based entrepreneurs who are specifically rendering a done-for-you or done-with-you type service, or perhaps you're a coach or consultant doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or in a group context, or you're offering a course. If you fall outside of those business models, then this financial model isn't built for your business. So I'm going to dive into this and I'm going to break down for you exactly how we go about managing advertising and labor ensuring that we are as efficient as possible and generating the profits that we need to be generating. It's also important to note that this is about optimizing your finances. So I'm going to use an example of $50,000 of revenue. And in this case, we are not trying to grow revenue. We are just trying to maintain revenue at $50,000 and ensure that we are running as optimally as possible. For growth and scaling your business, I have a video called the Master Growth Plan, where I go into detail around how to use these two key levers in your business in order to grow from 50 to 7,500, whatever that may be. So that is a little bit different to what I'm discussing now. I'm talking about optimization. So I want to give you a quick analogy around the way I look at understanding what it means to optimize your finances. And that analogy is based on driving a car. I want you to imagine you're in a car and you're driving down the road. It's a flat road. There's no incline, no decline. Therefore, there's no external forces. And you're driving 50 miles per hour. And your car is, you know, automatic car. So it's probably in the correct gear it needs to be in. And let's just say, for argument's sake, you're in gear three. And what that means is your revs are nice and low, probably around 2,000 revs per minute, which means you're not expending a ton of energy, which allows you to sustain that level of output, traveling at 50 miles per hour on this flat road for an extended period of time before you run out of gas. And so that's, that's why you're in that gear, because it's the perfect gear to be in. Now imagine you're in second gear. What would happen is your revs would fly up. So you'd probably be five or 6,000 revs per minute. You'd be expending a huge amount of energy, just shortening the period of time that you can continue to operate under those circumstances because you're going to be burning through gas. And you're going to put a huge amount of stress on your engine and run the risk of a blowout. The adverse is also true. If you're in, let's say you're in fourth gear, and now all of a sudden your revs may drop down, which means you're expending less energy, but you're going to now struggle to maintain traveling at 50 miles per hour for an extended period of time without the fear of stalling out your engine. And it's exactly the same thing as your finances. And I want you to think about that when I talk about your finances, that what we are trying to do when we're talking about optimization, what we are trying to do is we're trying to ensure that we are in the perfect gear for generating $50,000 of revenue a month. Now, you obviously, revenue can be a variable. This is all percentage-based. So whatever that revenue number is, is fine. I'm just going to use 50000 as an example. But we want to be in that perfect gear. And when we're in that perfect gear, we're expending as little energy as possible while maximizing profits, ensuring longevity, and allowing us to build a, a cash base or cash resources that will allow us in future to grow and scale at a far quicker rate than, than if we worked. And so you can imagine if the 55 is that gear three, it's a perfect gear. But imagine we're in gear two. So this was at say 75 or 80%. All of a sudden now your profitability is right down. You, you cannot sustain that for a long period of time and you're gonna run the risk of blowing out your business because you're gonna run out of cash. Adversely, if you're in fourth gear, so this is maybe 35%, and you're thinking, great, Ben, I've got this massive amount of profits, that's awesome. The problem there is, are you able, with that amount of, of investment into advertising and labor, to maintain the capacity to still generate $50,000? And are you spending enough on advertising in order to actually land those clients and, and generate that revenue? And there you run the risk of stalling out. So what we want to do in optimization, we want to get to gear three, that perfect gear that we're at 55% and we're operating, giving ourselves the maximum longevity in our business. And then we can springboard from there into a growth cycle in terms of increasing our revenue from 50 to 70 or 100 or whatever that may look like. So I want to dive into it here. So the first thing I have is I have a scale. 
And this scale is simply, on this end, there's 100% labor and therefore 0% advertising. And on the other end, there is 100% advertising and 0% labor. And if you're on this side of the scale, you're obviously spending all of that 55% on labor and nothing on advertising, which is not realistic in any of these business models. You need to have some form of both. And so I'm going to start on with a done for you and done with you servicing. So if you're doing a done for you or done with you, your ratio within this 55% is going to be heavily towards labor. Okay, the reason why is done for you, done with the lifetime value of a client is considerably more than that of, for instance, of course, uh, you're probably charging a premium, but you also have capacity issues. So you can't just have an infinite number of clients. And so the bigger focus there is making sure we're rendering the service or, or delivering the product that we really need to deliver. So we attach 45% to labor and 10% to advertising. And then we shift across to coaching or consulting. And the first bracket here is one-on-one. -on -one. Time is not your friend here. You only have X amount of time to coach or consult people. Therefore, you can only have a small number of potential clients that you can have at any point in time. Therefore, the cost for labor is definitely going to be a lot higher than that of, for instance, a course. And we're going to probably invest a little bit more in advertising, yes, but not considerably more than that because we just can't have that many clients. And then the pendulum kind of switches here when we start moving on to group coaching or consulting and then onto a course where we're going to start looking to invest more heavily into advertising. And simply because now our value of time is far greater in terms of our clients. Because if you're offering group coaching, you can have in that one hour, you can now have 10, 15, 20 clients as opposed to just one. If likewise, if you're offering a course, you can have a huge amount of people enrolling into your course. Therefore, we need to start investing more money into advertising and therefore the cost of labor will naturally decrease because it's not one-on-one -on -one or done for you it's done in more of a group context where you're offering a course and there the ratios are 20 percent for a group and 35 percent for ad for labor um, under the group model and up to 25 percent for a course and 30 percent for labor when we're factoring a course and you'll see all the sums here still equal 55 and that's so important staying within that 55 realm and not being not being in the wrong gear here and obviously though, there is gonna be some variance here depending on the niche that you're in. Every niche is different. Sometimes the cost of acquisition for clients in certain niches are more than others. So you may have to adjust these um, you know, accordingly depending on the business model you're running. But this is a very clear guideline you can use right now and plug into your business and then start to see where you actually are compared to this and then start to make adjustments in terms of formulating your perfect. PNL. And just to note this variance is 5% of revenue. So that's quite a big variance. You know, you can go as much as 15% here, and then that will subsequently drop down to 40%. But you want to obviously keep the ratio to equal 55% in total. And so I really hope this was helpful. And I hope that while you're optimizing your finances and breaking down advertising and labor, this will give you a very clear picture of how to go about doing that to ensure that you are as efficient as possible and generating as much profits, therefore free cash flow, in order to, to allow yourself to springboard and grow in the future. So thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, if this was helpful, please share it with those uh, who think you could use it. Um, and any comments are, are hugely welcomed. So thanks again. Cheers.